let's talk about the two witnesses or the two prophets from Revelations 11. My name is Mary Moses and I'm going to do an ancient art form called scrying to find answers in the Bible. The two witnesses are connected to the two olive trees or the two lamp stands. And what I need to everyone to understand about this reading is that I believe personally from doing readings for 15 years from what the Holy Spirit has told me is that the Bible is an allegory that is within us and outside of ourselves. It's everywhere. And King James wrote a book before he wrote the Bible called Demonology. And in this book, he talks about werewolves, vampires, um, witches, fairies, elves. And I believe that he had a very limited understanding of Jesus Christ. And so Christ of the Bible is a very limited understanding and really puts or focuses him as a man and maybe even like a vampire, drink my blood and live forever. And people worship Jesus outside of themselves, not realizing that Jesus births within our hearts and we become Christ and become the body of Christ. And we can be as powerful as Christ. Jesus said so. And so Jesus also said in the book of Thomas that I am the all. Look at a stone, look at a piece of wood, and there I am also. So you are water, you are 88% water. Jesus is within all things. He is a foundation, he is a realm, he is a reality. And so you can be the embodiment of Christ, and Christ can manifest as an animal or a building or a person or anything really. Turn over a stone and there I am also. So let's scratch on a piece of paper because there he is also. And let's let Jesus Christ tell us about the two prophets or the two witnesses. And we're going to reveal some things that people probably will have a hard time believing. And that's okay because I could be wrong. So the two witnesses are the two towers from the year 2001. The two towers looks like the number 11. 911 is 9 plus 1 plus 1 equals 11. The two towers sits in front of a body of water. Its reflection makes the numbers 1111. 1111 is about a pole shift. Many people began to experience the Mandela effect and even began speaking about the their twin flame. The twin towers on fire like a twin flame. Jesus Christ has 11 letters in his name. And the burning of the two towers is about a collective death. And yet a rebirth and a life for many of us who have transcended or ascended and can hear the new coming of the sun. And so Christ is, yes, in your heart, in your mind, in a piece of wood, in a stone, but the Son of God is the S-U-N of God. And so the old Son is connected to the bearded man, which is the plasma that emits from Saturn. And so when the new Son comes, this is the new S-U-N of God. This is Jesus Christ. This is Sirius B, the dog star. So let's look at the symbols within this piece and talk about exactly what is happening. At one o'clock, there is Enlil. And Enlil is someone who keeps coming in my art over and over telling me that he or she bounces our consciousness from a lower realm to a higher realm, like a parallel realm. Below him is a man and then below the man is Jesus Christ. Next to Jesus Christ is a tic-tac-toe symbol with the numbers 1111. So tic-tac-toe is 1111. One of the 11s is lying down. One is standing up. This means death and life. It's also known as the magical square and is connected to the sun. Jesus is holding one hand back and one hand forward. And he is one pillar of the two towers. That is on fire. There is a face where their mind or their head is being cut off. Their third eye is being cut off. But this person at five o'clock actually bounced their consciousness up to higher realms next to Enlil. 
the American flag is backwards. This means a forsaken reality. And then under the chin of this person is a symbol of the crescent moon. And they are in water. There is a chalice at 7 o'clock that is falling over with the symbol of Solomon or the star of David. There is an airplane hitting the two towers that looks like a shark with a scorpion on one of its wings. Above the wing of the scorpion is another bearded man. Next to the bearded man or the other tower is a chalice with a dog. This is Sirius B, the dog star, and a sun coming out of the chalice. Next to the chalice at 11 o'clock is a female. This is like a Mary Magdalene with a flame above her head because her hands, her one hand that is touching the two towers, forms the letter M.M. Now, it may not be Mary Magdalene, but it may be Master Magician or Master Mason. I don't know. Regardless, it seems as if there has been a shift of a patriarch into a matriarch and the male energy being destroyed and the female energy taking over. It is a mother energy. Now, everyone knew that the two towers was going to fall before it fell. The 1976 Super Tramp album prophesied it. If you flip the album around and look at the two towers, you can actually see the number 911. And it's as if it was a harvest. Because if you look up the word Super Tramp in Gematria and find the parallels with the album cover even, Super Tramp, there seems to be some energies out there that know things and purposely put them in our faces. So the number Super Tramp comes to 706 and it parallels with last days. I am prophecy. Metatron's cube. This is about sacred geometry. Last Supper. Isn't that funny that the waitress is holding uh, food? I am Babylon. Babylon is falling. A day of reckoning. Even the this Nazi symbol is the number 1111. They said it was SS, but it's actually two towers being cut in half. This symbol is a famous symbol of two towers falling with a knife kind of cutting into the two towers. So understanding this twin flame, twin towers, number 11, 1111, really helps us to understand what is happening biblically, uh, spiritually, individually, and collectively. King Solomon, you can see the reflection of King Solomon and the two towers falling with the water below and the sun above, which is fire. And the two pillars of Solomon are known as two witnesses, Boaz and Joachim. They were actual people. They stood in a portal door. They were like soldiers who kept people from a reality. And so Sirius B, the dog star, is connected to the second coming of the sun, where here we see Christ coming out of a chalice. He is the second coming of the sun, which is Sirius B, the dog star. This means that the chalice that fell over at 7 o'clock was what once dominated us, which was Saturn, which was a bearded man that is a plasma that emits from Saturn. This bearded man connected to St. Nicholas, connected to these, this, this patriarch, and these bearded men like Zeus or Odin or Jesus Christ. The new son is a female now, what we have to understand about the female is that in the beginning, Adam was Eve and Eve was Adam. The true holy uh, being was both male and female. And they say that vampires were androgynous, both male and female, and they had two souls. They were called twin souls. And so one was male, one was female. So the other half of Jesus Christ is Mary Magdalene, the M.M., and so we have shifted from a male-dominated energy, Saturn, to Sirius B, the dog star, which is a female. And this is about rebirth. This is about our twin self. This is about birthing our places on ourselves on high. This is about not losing consciousness at death. 
This is about a new world. Now, the scorpion is connected to the jinn. Now, the jinn were a smokeless vapor that King Solomon controlled. And King Solomon used to put them in bottles of lead. But what we have to understand about the jinn is that they are allegories about our genes. During the time of Atlantis, our genes were manipulated and they were making clones. So Adam was cut from Eve. And so this separation really messed with our genes. So this is why the Bible starts with Genesis, gene, Isis, and Gentile. And so when we have shifted through frequency, through the stars outside of ourselves, we shift inside our body as well. So inside ourselves, outside of ourselves. So this is why Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is within you. And if you believe me, you can be as powerful as me and more because this shift doubles ourself. We become rebirthed to our other half, our twin flame. And the reason that the scorpion or the gen energy is on the airplane is because in order for us to be welcomed into a hidden uh, realm, which is between the two pillars, which are the two witnesses and the two prophets that can manifest as pillars, pieces of wood, stone, um, is because we have to go with the flow and allow this new sun to speak to our heart. The first brain was our heart. It's 5,000 times stronger than our brain within our head. And so when we died of ego, died of self-importance, died of the material world and reawoken to the voice of spirit and that female energy that births new life, then we have been allowed into a secret doorway, which is the two pillars. These are the two witnesses and the two prophets in Revelations 11. And if you can trust and have faith, then in between the two pillars is the eye of the needle. And the eye of the needle is a geometrical shape known as the vesica Pisces. It looks like a fish. This is why Jesus is connected to the fish and the Pisces symbol because it is a portal or a door that requires that you go to zero point energy and not believe anything and not feel anything and forgive and let go. Because if you can become as light as a feather and and allow energy to shift you and shift your DNA, even your genes uh, within your body, which is the gen, Genesis, then you can make it to that higher realm. And that higher realm is your twin self, your twin flame birthed in higher places. And these allegories are all over in our faces, like Dorothy Gale. She left um, an old world and her house was broken and empty and it killed a witch, right? This means she died. Dorothy Gale has 11 letters in her name and she went to a mansion, Emerald City. Jesus said, my father's house is a mansion, has many mansions. And so you go from a little house to a mansion. So the twin towers that fell was about a death. And so when Harry Potter left the little house, he went to a mansion like Hogwarts. And Harry Potter has 11 letters in his name as well. And so these allegories are about our twin flame. So Harry Potter was a witch or a wizard and Dorothy was the witch. So there was two realms, one male, one female, that were like the original Adam and Eve finding our other half. And so the two halves form the vesica Pisces, which is the eye of the needle. So when you can balance your male and your female, your Adam and Eve, you go through the eye of the needle and suddenly you bounce into a new world. It's a little different. The new world is a little different, but uh, you'll begin to see things with eyes of spirit and the Holy Spirit, you'll begin to see through the eyes of the Holy Spirit so that when you do go in the spirit realm, you're not seeing through your own eyes. You're seeing through the eyes of spirit and this is why jesus said let thine eye be single thy eye of the needle is many things and this is why the airplane um actually looks like the eye of the needle and the eye of the needle looks like a flame and when we birth ourselves or double ourselves or are born again 
we actually get an invisible flame above our heads. And it does look like the Vesica Pisces. And it, it is the Holy Spirit or a higher self which controls us and dominates us so that we are not ignorant and we are not powerless. We can walk on water, raise the dead, just as Jesus said we could. So Enlil is the God who sent the flood. When we think of the flood, think of a lower realm of water. This is the baptism of water. And then when we think of the higher realm, which is the coming of the sun, think of fire. This is water and fire, the baptism of fire. And so when we have gone above the wall of water, we have actually risen from the dead. We have gone from the moon to the sun. Now the God of the moon, his name was Sin. So we have actually overcome sin uh, by going through the baptism of fire, which is the sun. We have, like in alchemy, um, transcended from lead to gold, the moon to the sun. And we have shifted from the head to the heart. And we have gone through a marriage of flesh and spirit male and female. Now, Enlil is also connected to the two tablets, and notice how the two towers looks like the two tablets of Moses. So in conclusion, the two prophets and two witnesses are everything and everyone. They are the two pillars of Solomon, they are the two towers, and they are about the two baptisms, the baptism of water and the baptism of fire. It is about life and death. There are those who are left behind, but there are those who are rebirthed and are connected to their twin flame, like a twin tower. The Gospel of Philip says that it is incorrect that Jesus died and resurrected. It is more correct that Jesus resurrected than died. So we have all gone through a resurrection and we did not die. It also says that when the Adam comes back to the Eve, we will never die. When Male is balanced with female, we will never die because the Adam, when it was not cut from the Eve, had everlasting life. It was being cut like the two towers, Adam from Eve, that caused death. So Jesus Christ is being reunited with his other half, which is Mary Magdalene, and bringing that eternal life energy for those who have eyes to see. I don't know why Enlil looks like an alien, Enlil always looks like an alien in all of my readings and is somehow connected to Area 51. I don't know anything about it, though. So just understand that Christ and the two pillars are all one and the same because Christ is everyone and everything. And understand that Christ is both within us and outside of ourselves and even in unseen realms and is the S-U-N. Series B. The Dog Star, kind of like Harry Potter's God and Father. Series B. Series Black. The Dog. Hmm. Vampires and Werewolves. Now it's starting to come together, isn't it? 